All right, here we go. It starts in three, two, one. It's very hard to get a U.S. visa. I can't go to America and meet you guys. But you guys can come to China and visit me. I want to meet some single ladies. I want to find a girlfriend. Happy New Year! Danger, Will Robinson. The Morning Stream. They mostly come in the morning. Mostly... Hello, everybody. Welcome back to TMS, the morning stream for January 21st, 2020. I'm Scott Johnson. He's Brian Nibbett. Hello. Good morning. Hello, Scott Johnson. I'm energized. I don't know why I should be because Nick and his friend were up most of the night playing uh, hip hop downstairs and it rattled through the house and it was enough to keep me up most of the night. But I'm still in a good mood for some reason. Maybe it'll hit me later. Hit me around noon and I'll just go... And want to die. I don't know. <laughs> Were they playing the song that goes, Hey, ho, oh, hey, hey, I kind of wish. Hey, I kind of no, wish. No. Or break, uh, hup, hup, little, little something's gonna, yip, yip, dibba, dabba, do that. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But they were I no. Aha! Uh-huh. The hip to the hizzy and the don't stop, but the what not? I, we're, they were playing the new, uh, uh, the new Eminem album, which I like a lot. It's very ah. good. Uh, mm-hmm. But the um, uh, I was going to say about it. I was going to say a thing about it. And oh, they, uh, there's this song with a dude on there named Juice World. Okay, so he's like a okay. he's a collaborator feature artist that's there helping him do some rapping at the beginning and the end. That's of this actually thing. right next to the uh, state. It's right between the Steak Escape and the Sbarro <laughs> in the food court. Exactly. What hip hop artist decided to name himself after a what sounds like a chain of smoothie uh, places? Juice World. Why? Why? What? Oh, he just died. What? He did? No. Oh. That can't be. How? How? When? He just did this album. He was just on it. I was just listening to it. Hold on. Juice. See, I, I'm not oh, yeah. really Juice tied World. in. It's R R W R L D. W R L D ruled. Yeah, December 8th, he he died. He died. Oh, my Spoiled. gosh. Died. What happened there? This oh, is no. news. I didn't know. Oh, this makes me sad. At oh. Midway Airport in Chicago. But it doesn't say. How, how did he die? Uh, Age 21 is all. Man. Oh, seizure induced by substance intoxication. So he's he, he was, <laughs> on December eighth, twenty nineteen. Higgins was aboard a private Gulfstream jet flying from Van Nuys to Midway in Chicago, where law enforcement officers were waiting for the jet to arrive. As the pilot had notified them while the flight was en route that the jet was carrying guns and drugs. Wow. Uh, they found three handguns and seventy pounds of marijuana on the aircraft. Um. Let's see. They also stayed several members of Higgins' management team aboard the flight, attested Higgins had taken several unknown pills, swallowing multiple Percocet pills in an attempt to hide them while police were on board the plane searching the luggage. Dude, not, not a play. Uh, take the, uh, take the rap. Don't, don't hide your drugs in your body by swallowing them. Take the rap. Let's see what you did there. That's pretty the good. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't know. I had no idea. I don't even think yeah. Nick knows this, and he knows about all these rap star people. All these Jeez. mumble rappers. He's he's talented. Yeah. He really he oh, actually is, really is he uh, Juice World is a mumble rapper. He's kind of. I mean, it's more like a. You know, they're all into sort of like, ironically talking instead of rapping now. Like it's oh, a lot okay. of sort of. Like it's a lot of like that sort of thing, and he's done. He's doing that, and he's he's good. Like there's this this song. Um, uh, it's uh, called uh, Godzilla on the new album on Eminem's thing. And his bit is very good. Oh, emo rap. Is that the thing they're calling it? It's just kind of like sad rap. I don't know. Okay. Don't know what all to right. call it. But anyway, yeah, don't do that. If the cops are coming, don't try to swallow it all. That's a that's a thing you see in the no, movies. No, no. Don't do Jeez. that. All right. Well, juice I world. remember when uh, law enforcement officials tried to board the Spice Girls plane, and they had to hide all their girl power in their <laughs> giant boots. <laughs> oh, I'm glad it was the boots. Hide the girl power. Put it in the boots. Don't, don't swallow it, Philip. Philip. I love how I love how Queen Elizabeth is now a Spice Girl. Can't help it. I can't help it. I should be doing her actually, more. True story. That is actually what Posh Spice sounds like, and they <laughs> dub her voice for the songs. Nice. Listen, yeah. I would do uh, 
I would do more Queen Elizabeth if I was more focused on this whole controversy of uh, um, Meghan mm-hmm. Markle and and the and the prince leaving. You know, God, is it a controversy to anybody but the Queen? Really, I mean, I guess isn't there, is there anybody who says no? They should stay in the protective clutches of Buckingham Palace and live there forever. I, think I mean, I'm, like, I think it's great that they're doing this. Break free, I do man. Too. Yeah. You know what? Get go to Canada. I'd love to join you. Is that where they're going? <laughs> come, they're going to Canada. Come, yeah, they arrived in Canada this morning. Oh, I I'd, I'd say, you know, uh, maybe in this December, late November, I might join you, depending yeah. on how things go. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I, I, But no, like, if I was a royal, uh, I would want to... You never feel truly independent. You're just going to end up like your weird dad, you know? Like, you don't want to end up like that guy. Yeah. Get out of there. Yeah, That's what I say. I have no problem with them doing this. And it's not yeah, like they're... Exactly. Look, <laughs> this isn't how... This isn't going to be like freaking... Uh, what's a movie that does this where they give up all their shit? Uh, I can't think well, of one. I mean, but uh, it, coming to America is like that. A uh, little bit, yeah. Uh, They're not going to go work at McDowell's for the first two weeks of their time. <laughs> They're going to go on and be fine. They're going to have money have because arcs. of who they are. Yeah, they have the golden arches. <laughs> They're never going to not. They're never going to not have. Oh, Shit's Creek's a good example. <laughs> Shit Creek, Shit's Creek is great. Although that was that was not a voluntary giving up all of our. Uh... No, no. Well, now that show's ending. Maybe. Uh, uh, J- uh Dan- daniel levy is that his name the son he wrote yeah, the thing yeah. he, him and yeah. uh eugene should get together and write a sequel and have it be about the the markle and the and about the, the royals yeah. um did you know that uh twyla who works in the diner is uh is is daniel levy's brother another is another uh offspring of eugene levy wait so wait the sister who works there i know that is that who you're talking about? You said brother. Yeah, Twyla. Twyla. Oh, you said brother. No, is is uh, her brother is Daniel Levy? Is that what I said? No, you said uh, oh. is the brother okay. of Daniel Levy. Is what you said. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> I, I, I meant it the other way around. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I knew that, but only because uh, early in the season I went on an IMDb dive and went, oh my gosh, look, the whole family's here. Everyone's mm-hmm. here. Every Levy. Uh, all the Levies, uh, except the Chevy. Because it was dry. Because <laughs> it was dry. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no mom levy, or who's the mom levy? Because there he's been married forever to somebody. Uh, who is it? Hold on. Is it somebody famous? Uh, maybe not. Maybe that's why we never hear about her. Maybe she's just. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Eugene Levy. She likes to be out of the spotlight. He still looks great, dude. He does. He does. Uh, he's 70, 73 years old. He looks fantastic for his age. He's married to Deborah Devine. Oh, that's a cool. They've been married since 1977. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Good job. Who says that Hollywood can't have permanent couples? You have to be Canadian, though. You have to be Canadian to have that work. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Canada. Canada's where it works. Yeah. Uh, he is all. So what I like about him oh, is she he, looks he, like she looks like uh, like you know current day. Well, at least in this photo, she looks like current day Livy Newton John. Oh. He's very oh yeah. Look at that. Woman. She mm-hmm. seems very nice. Uh, well, not, in every, not in every photo. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, okay. Boy, he's worked a lot. That dude's done tons. You know, yeah. hats off. He's a weird-looking dude and funny, and he made it. Good job. Well done. Yep, exactly. Good job. Uh, may all the Canadian Jews do as well as you have. Yes. All right, Brian. Uh, uh, oh, a uh, quick shout out to one of our own. Uh, yeah. Dan, uh, uh, Tanner Goodman got okay, Salem. Uh, Boy, Salem in the old days of AIE. I don't oh, know if he right. still plays AIE. But, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. And I saw, I think his name in um, in Discord is still oh, Salem. Oh, Discord as well. is still Salem, yeah. Anyway, Tanner, uh, good good friend of the program, one of the nicest people I know, just a kind soul, one of those people you Absolutely. meet where you're just like, what a sweet dude that guy is. Anyway, um, always very helpful. It comes to all the meetups and stuff and and all that uh he had a kind of an emergency uh trip to an er and it turned out his gallbladder was freaking out some genetic thing his mom had it too and so they were going to take it out however because of some complications they couldn't do it right away so they had to hold him for a while and then the other day at 6 a.m yesterday i guess at 6 a.m they come bursting in there and say we have to take it out now which is wow. scary right like you don't want to hear yeah. that uh, so they did, and now he's uh, okay. He's in recovery. Uh, he's, I think, going home today, and uh, we're just wishing him well. Hope you're doing Told okay. Him. See if you can see if you can bring it home in a jar. I know Viking Lass kept her gall- gallbladder. Did she keep it, or did she, or did she date a guy who had his gallbladder in a jar? I cannot remember. I know she had hers out during the uh, 
during the tenure of our show because I think she she went through the same thing and we gave her a shout out on the show as well. Hmm. Um, I wouldn't want to make it like named a, it. Ma- she named it Gilbert or something. Make it like a squishy nervous ball, like you have at your desk to squeeze when mm-hmm. you're nervous. Get, make your make mm-hmm. your gallbladder into that. <laughs> that's right. Yes, yeah, right. Exactly. Have it uh, have it turn perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Rainbow Bright reminds us it was the guy that April dated kept his foreskin in a jar. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. How did we, uh, how did we forget for that? Yeah, that thanks. We've, we've, yeah. We blocked that from our memory. We appreciate you letting us know what that was. <laughs> yeah, so uh, when my, when my well, whatever he is to me, I guess he's my stepfather, but he's not really. Uh, John, who married my mom in his 70s. <laughs> I mean, he's fine. We just don't think, I mean, he's just not the, he didn't raise us. Like, right, he, he's but, just, but he's still a stepfather. Is he? Is yeah, he though? That's the that is like you know in the in the eye of the of the law he is your stepfather like really all the all the hemming and hawing in the world he married your mother correct I don't think there's any law about it though he's just isn't he just a he's just whatever you want to call him and if he if he raised us like if we were if he was around at all for like you know our late teens or something yeah but if yeah. he's but he married my mom in his seventies. I'm not saying to call him dad. I'm not saying you have to listen to him, Scott. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, you know, if, if your mother marries someone, they become your stepfather. <laughs> oh, I find it hard to do for some reason. It's my own uh, psychosis. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know that is that is weird. It's like <laughs> I don't know why. I just go. Ah, it's just John. Well, what is he? Well, I don't know. I guess he's married to my mom, so I guess he's my yeah. son. Like I mean, I, my mom remarried yeah. uh, a guy named Barney. Barney passed away a few years ago, and and he was my stepfather. He didn't. He didn't. Well, he raised me for a few years, but I never considered him my father. Right. Uh, but I considered him. You know, he was my stepfather by the the very definition of the term. Yeah. So I guess you're right. Well, anyway. This cranky anyway. guy, this cranky guy in my life named, <laughs> named John, who's my stepfather, I guess. <laughs> sure. Uh, he. <laughs> what was my point? Oh, he had his gallbladder out a few years ago, and uh-huh. it, and it looked like a big blueberry pie. It was the grossest thing I've ever seen. It was that. It was. Wait, wait, wait. How big was it? It was about the size of a pie. It was. It was pretty big. It had gotten really big, wow. and inside of it were these big, marbly, dark balls that were the mm-hmm. stones, right? Mm-hmm. And they were, and they, and they looked like a, they looked like pie filling to me. And I remember just thinking, don't ever show me that again. I don't want to see that. He had a wow. picture at the hospital. He's like, hey, by look law, at this. By law, by the way, that was your step, step ladder. <laughs> my or step ladder, step, my step, step stones. <laughs> <laughs> They're my stepping stones. Okay, great. They're your step. <laughs> great, great. Uh, anyway, so Tanner, we're thinking about you. We hope everything goes totally uh, are, fine. Yes. Feel better and be ready for uh, dim sum and, uh, and many, many shenanigans in a couple months. Yes. Well, uh, pr- whatever dim sum has less, I guess you yeah, can't eat. You can't eat fatty things now, right? Isn't that what your gallbladder does? It helps you. Oh, really? Processes uh, fats and stuff. I think so. I think that's that's the deal. one of those things that I have no idea what the gallbladder does. I thought it produced. It doesn't produce bile, does it? Isn't that the thing that produces bile? I think it. Mm, <laughs> maybe. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know. Does something else take over? It's stored in the uh, stored in the gallbladder. It's produced by the liver. Liver produces bile, but it's stored in the gallbladder. Oh, okay. So, so does it? Do, do, is it just an initial thing where you kind your body has to adjust, or does it, is it a long term? Because what Eric Van Skyhawk also does not have his gallbladder, and he told me mm-hmm. that he can just never eat like fried food or fat food again. He just wow. can't do it. Okay. And if he does, he's just sick for a month or something. Yeah, helps break down fat from food in your intestine. I think you just got to be. Uh, you just got to be cool with it. like you got you can't go overboard and you probably do have to really dramatically cut back but it's it's i don't think it's like a temporary thing i think you you um, you always have it you kind of always have to be wary of that now yeah, yeah. see i like organs like the appendix which mean which just does shit shit all it doesn't do anything <laughs> just take it out you're done you don't need it you never needed it it's just a thing that the I don't know. I guess back in the back when cavemen would eat a rock or whatever, that's where it would stay. But you sure. don't do that anymore. Well, so. it also it also uh, gives all the sources from where everything else is is from in your body. It like tells you, okay, well, this one came from this book, 
and uh, oh, this, oh this that thing. oh i see yeah it was a long way to go for a really bad joke i would I workshop that one working no, on it it wasn't working bad it. because normally i can see those coming down the road but i this wasn't mm-hmm. i didn't hear it till it pulled up to the curb so that was fine <laughs> well it was it was a hybrid <laughs> it was electric it was, oh. really, it was a really it was a really quiet i just heard night. an odd hum it was very weird yeah um all right Absolutely. so uh, uh a thing i gotta tell you about real fast here oh did you did you watch watchmen i can't remember did you watch that channel? i did watch the watchmen i answered that very question who watches the watchmen and you I did. Do. You, I do. Yeah. All right. So the reason I asked that is, did you notice? I mean, I, I, this was obvious, but every car, every truck, everything in that show had like a, a battery hum to it. it. They were all meant to be oh, yeah. electrics. Yeah. yeah. It was something no one ever I talked did, about. I did notice that. It's like future, near future or something, I guess is the idea. I don't know. Yeah. Alternate uh, alternate present. Yeah, or maybe. Alternate near future. Oh, yeah. Good um, point. I did yeah. notice a couple nights ago. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm like half an episode away from being done with... Uh, the current season the newest season of the expanse which Mm. i love i forgot to tell you uh uh david strathairn 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 i love that guy you love that guy and you will love him in the expanse didn't know he was in season four that's fantastic he's in season i think he shows up in season three he might even show up as early as season two i think season three Okay. Um, I don't remember him in two. Anyway. I'm not caught up on. Okay, then he must be. Then yeah, then it must be three. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, so um, Undersecretary uh, uh, Gravity Voice Undersecretary <laughs> <laughs> Shara. Yeah. Anyway, her husband is a teacher at the college, and they came into one of his classes as he's giving his students the assignment, and he says, "Okay, well, make sure you follow up on the readings of Logan Boothby and Preston." And okay. uh, so your test is on Monday, and the kids all go out. And I'm thinking, Logan and Preston. Yeah. Is he is he telling them to uh, read up on the the writings of Bill and Ted? I mean, that's what it sounds like. It's a great little Easter eggy reference. What is was Boothsby? Um, that wasn't uh, Rufus's last name, was it? It Rufus Boothsby. Hold on. Did Rufus have a? Uh, Boothsby. Uh, I'm looking it up just to see. Yeah. Uh, n- n- no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. He's that Boothby is not in there. All right. Interesting though. So you think they yes. meant to, meant to do that then? Do you think, you think that was an yes, on purpose? Deal? I think so. All right. Yep. I think so. Bunch of guys are a bunch of Bill and Ted fans. That's fantastic. It was really, really good. Yes. All right. I got a very funny story to tell and then we'll move on to news. Um, I'm probably not supposed to tell the story. If Kim's at the gym with her sister right now, so she can't do anything about it, so I'm just going to tell her. <laughs> Try and stop me. All right. Good. Yesterday, we went to lunch with Carter at, and also to hang around her new place a bit, take some additional stuff that she didn't have room for when she moved out on Saturday. Uh, all good, all's well, right? Take it all out there. Uh, her our apartment's awesome. It's so, like, up her alley. I'm so excited for it. It's very cool. Um, anyway, uh, I go out there. And we take stuff up there, and we go, all right, let's go get lunch. Her roommate is nowhere to be seen. We think she's off with her boyfriend somewhere, so we haven't seen her yet. And mm-hmm. just for reference, her boy, her uh, her roommate is my oldest daughter's, one of her best friends from high school. And in okay. high school, this girl was like this amazing artist and still is, just an incredible painter, just a mind-blowingly talented. Um, anyway, she's not there, but we're there so we do our thing and we're like all right let's go get lunch so we go to taqueria 27 downtown fantastic Mm. taco place amazing food we love them there's like three locations here they're really good so we do that having a great time talking whatever and then we're like all right let's go back to the apartment um uh, help you unpack a couple of things and then we got to get out of here because i have a show so we so we do that we go back to the apartment and kim says to herself I think I'm going to help clean this bathroom because it's kind of a mess. Okay. But before that, I'm going to use this yeah, they bathroom. They just moved in. Yeah, Jeez. they just moved in. Well, t- Carter did. The other girl had already been there. Oh, she'd already been living yeah. there. Okay, gotcha. She had another roommate that moved out. So uh, Kim was. Kim's like, well, I'm going to use the bathroom first. Now, you know, look, we're all human beings. We all just had a big taco meal. Uh, everybody poops. Everybody yeah. poops. I've read that book. We all poop. And uh, she had to go. So Kim goes in there and does her business. No big deal. No no problem. <laughs> the second uh-huh. she walks out of there, bing bong, the door opens. And okay. it's the roommate and her boyfriend. Again. It sounds like my dishwasher, by the way. Still- <laughs> <laughs> Mine plays a song. It goes. Dee, 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 
<laughs> like that. It's really annoying. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So the doorbell rings. Door, or the, the door, the, actually, just, I guess the door just opened. They didn't actually ring it. But anyway, they, they come in and they're like, hey, oh, hey, it's you guys. Oh, hey. It's, her name's Shay. We're like, hey, Shay, it's good to see you. Talking to her and stuff. She goes, hey, yeah, this is my boyfriend and he is here for a very special reason. And we went, oh, cool. What's, what's up? And he's got a box in his hand. She goes, mm -hmm. he has brought the fixed shower, uh, what do you call it? Shower head for the bathroom. It's hmm, been leaking okay. like crazy for years, and I finally got him to do it, and we figured since Carter's in, this is time to do it. So brand new shower head, and he's going to go install it right this second. <laughs> okay. So this guy heads straight to the can, and my wife is so flustered by it because she knows that she's just, you know, left, yeah. left the room. Right. That she says, oh, she's going to kill me when she finds out I told the story, but she says, <laughs> she goes, uh... Oh, I can't remember how she said it. It was the funniest thing because she got this nervous sort of like she had to say something. <laughs> and she says, I can't find the wipes to clean up that bathroom or something like that. Oh, nice. So she was going to like go in there, like try and figure out a way to go in there first. Yes. And maybe uh, just kind of clean the slow, counter. Slow and just things down. And slow right, things exactly. down. <laughs> get, some lemon, get some lemon fresh scent going in yeah. there. Yeah, but it didn't happen. So this guy went in there. Uh, braved the storm, put in the shower head, and the whole time Nick and I, Nick and I are in the other room just laughing our heads off because, because you can tell Listen, this usually happens to me. So I was laughing because normally this is a me problem, but nope, it happened sure. to my wife. My awesome wife had to deal with one of these stupid things for once, and it wasn't me. So, so I, I took some, I took some fun in it. All right, everybody. Uh, every uh, everybody tweet Kim and uh, <laughs> say you know next time light a match or open a window or. Uh, <laughs> Do it on Facebook, though. She doesn't ever exactly. check Twitter, but if you do Facebook, oh, okay, she'll, yeah. she'll do it. So, um, listen, it's the whole reason that when we checked out Snowbird for the first time for that very first uh, Nerdtacular at Snowbird, yeah. uh, during the walkthrough, I'd step over and kind of look over at, at areas where we weren't getting the tour. Yep. Just so was like, I always wondered I about this. Early 2013, we're out there in the uh, – that's it was snowing outside. Brian was with us. Uh, you had driven up, I guess, with uh, Corinne and Jason. Jason. Yep, Jason Corinne drove us up, but we stopped off and got uh, a couple cups of coffee and some McLeanamons from uh, – Oh, Ava's from Bakery. That, mm. Yeah, the place is so good. But, yeah, uh, so good. You know, you have a lot of coffee, especially, you know, you get a different kind of coffee that you're not used to and yep. plays havoc with the old uh, yeah, yeah. digestive system. Yep. So Brian was always about 10 paces behind everybody. <laughs> I wouldn't say always, but a couple <laughs> times during the tour, I went over to uh, to just kind of look in a ballroom and say, oh, this is a pretty good sized room right here. Oh, this is good. Here, let me, I'll go in here and close the door for a second and just see what the echo is like. Oh, it's great in here. Yeah, don't yeah. come in. Yeah, don't I'll come in. No, it's it's good. Yeah, yeah. don't come in here. Okay. Oh, I'm good. where are we going for lunch? Oh, that Mexican <laughs> food place down there, El Chinante or whatever it is. That great. is where All we right, ate, cool. isn't it? That's where we had lunch. It is. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's too funny. But that's my point: is it's usually me or people like me, like you or whoever that has to deal with this sort of thing, and to have Kim have to deal with it is uh, is is a rarity. So I just uh, I had some fun. That's yeah. all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I had a good time. I should have taken the bullet. What was I going to say? I that's me. That was me in there. I did it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just glad that uh, Shay's boyfriend. You know, they came in and said, "Oh, we're finally going to be able to fix that U joint or that U, uh, that pipe on the toilet that uh, uh, that we had to take off because <laughs> the toilet wasn't flushing right and yeah. overflows." <laughs> exactly. Oh, I that gotta... would be what would happen to me. That's now. Here is a question for you that is not related to this or anything else. Mm -hmm. I just want to see what your answer would be. Okay. Brian, okay. if you lived in a place and you had, you went and just plugged your TV in one day, you moved in, okay, plugged mm -hmm. your TV in, and suddenly you're getting HBO and Showtime. Okay. You were supposed to only and, get. And not paying for, and you're saying I didn't pay for it? Yeah, it was, it's just, it's just showed up. given to me? Yeah, you just showed up. You're, you're getting these premium channels, and you're getting it for nothing, and you're like, oh, whoa, cool. Well, you just mm -hmm. keep using it because I don't know why I'm getting it. I'm just getting it for free. I don't know. Yeah. Course. And then it would sure. just happen, and you would, and let's say for six years you had that those two channels, and it was just like, man, this is great. Not only do I get the the free cable that I normally am supposed to get, but for some reason this is wired in such a way that I'm also getting these two premium channels. I'm getting all this HBO goodness. This is amazing. And then yeah. let's say one day in those six years' time, uh, HBO says, "All right, well, 
we knew this was a thing, but we felt bad, so we let you go sort of have it. But you know, six years is a good long free run. We're gonna we're gonna now <laughs> we're gonna now put HBO back behind that that access. I, I really thought we were going like there was something uh, up happening at uh, Carter's apartment. Right there, right. Right. I, know, so I was hoping HBO, you thought. Yes. Yeah, that's I was hoping you were thinking. But if yeah. they did that, would you now? What would your reaction be? HBO I'd be like well you know thank you for being so so good about letting me have HBO for such a long time mm -hmm. and I've really enjoyed all the content I can't wait to find out what happens on the new season of Curb Your Enthusiasm and this new Hugh Laurie comedy that I can't wait to watch yeah. sure right. uh, I will pay the $20 or $15 a month or whatever it is to continue getting HBO yeah Especially if they said, that, what if they told you it was only a buck? What if they said it was a buck for HBO? A buck? A month. I think that's a no-brainer. Yeah, for a per month? I mean, it'd be insane, right? Like You just say, what are you guys doing? Is your system broken? A dollar, really? Um, <laughs> You've anyway. got something wrong with your system, HBO, if you're only going to charge me a dollar a month for all this amazing content. And scene. Am I laying it on pretty thick? Yeah, yep. Can... Nope, there you go. We've done it. That's just I don't I don't know that's apropos of nothing. We don't know what we're saying. We're just saying a thing. We're just putting it out there to a certain uh, to a certain uh, uh, couple of people who think they just should. just a couple. We know there's just a couple people out there yeah. who they think they should get HBO in perpetuity because they got it for free at first. That's what they think. Right. Of course. Of course. All right. Uh, hey, look well, at this. If you don't have a credit card and you can't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> One day we need to actually, of, of in all seriousness, we should have a conversation about what I'm seeing is a bit of a trend, despite. The fact that they're going to be left with very few options, but this trend of, of moving away from any sort of credit. I don't know how people pay for things if they don't do credit. Like if you don't have... Yeah, I don't know. I use credit cards not to uh, get debt. I do it to pay for a thing, and then I pay that card off every month. Every month. Right. I never carry right. a, a balance. Yeah, no. Recovery. So I know that that's yeah. not how everyone does it. I know it's for some people it's tempting just to put stuff on credit, but... Um, so I get I get the downfalls of credit, but how are you paying for things? If you go to a mall or a store, well, a mall a mall is one thing because you're going there physically. Some places still even take check. You could pay cash, whatever. But it's it's things where they have to bill something. Um, like uh, I I don't even know if I'd be able to have a website if I didn't have a credit card because I don't think right. the company is going to say, okay, we're going to send you a bill. Please put your check in the in the envelope and send it back to us. Well, even if you even if they pull it automatically from say a PayPal account, that PayPal account is backed by one of your credit cards. Like you, mm -hmm. you still have to right. do those sort of things. So I'm, I'm, right. so yeah, you're right. Mall, forget about mall. That can be cash. But if right. you're talking about like, um, well, the debit, I, and I see debit as the same kind of thing. It's still a you're 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 not carrying debt. You're using it to pay with the money you own. But um, it's still a card when, though. I guess that's it's still what I'm a saying. Card. Is, it's still a card you can use online for things, and I think. Right. What we're hearing from a couple people is they don't have a card that they can use. Well, it's not even that they don't. It's that they have willfully gotten rid of all their cards. Like right. they have, they've thrown all the entire idea away, and they don't want to pay through cards. And this is, I'm not, I'm not taking the piss here. I'm actually curious. No, no, I'm curious. Yeah. How how do you do anything online? How do you do, how do you do that stuff? And is it if you say, well, it's just prepaid cards? Well, then I would ask, what's the difference? I mean, why 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 that and not? Why not something that gives you points, for example? Like, I like my American right. Express card because every time I use it, I get points for it, which means I get a bunch of cash that I wouldn't normally get. And I never carry a balance, so it's not a debt thing. So it's just a method to pay. And I know right. that I know that they count on people being in huge debt on those things to make their big money. Yeah. I understand all, all that. And, may, their, and maybe that's problems. it. Maybe people have some kind of, like... Um, holistic view of it of like it's just an evil construct or something I, I don't know i'm really curious about it so anyway yeah let us anyway, know all right. send us your emails so i'd be curious what uh what your what your uh, take is because i'm i'm open yeah. to you know whatever your ideas are it's just it's just something that came up all right uh brian that's it for stories and other things it's now time for us to dive into uh, this thing if I can find the right thing to click here it is now if you'll excuse me I must go take my vitamins all right your uh, news has upset me greatly <laughs> thanks <laughs> what uh, what do we have for the news today oh it's brought to you by the news brought to you by Viva TMS Vegas it's coming up March 26th through March 28th in Las Vegas Nevada we've got uh, room deals with the plaza where we've had it a couple of years in the past or the last couple of years and we've got events going on. We're doing a thing, a meetup thing. At, we're back at the Millennium Fandom Bar on Thursday night. And we're going back to HyperX Esports Lounge for hanging out 
and play in Vigi games on Saturday night, the 28th. Nice. Be there. Find out details by joining the or, or checking them out in the Frog Pants Discord. Yeah. Uh, also, I remember to tell Jerry about it, so now he knows, and he'll he's oh, gonna, good. he'll let us know if he's able to come or not. Uh, okay, so I get it. Some people in the chat are saying uh, they don't like to have their demographic data out mm. there. No, well, that makes sense. I, I guess I gave that up a long time ago. I, I don't yeah. care that they know that I'm a white male, age 50, with a... Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't know why I care about that. I'm not, Again, not bagging on anyone else's thinking. I just... It's just this... this is, I, I, maybe I've just... I've conceded. I don't know. I don't know. All right, we'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Let, anyway. Let's get to the news. Pornhub in the news. Let's talk about Pornhub. Ready for Pornhub? You like Pornhub. I'm ready for Pornhub. Am I ready for Pornhub? Sure. <laughs> no one's truly ready for Pornhub. Listen, of all the of all the porn vendors out there, it feels like Pornhub is the one is the is the group that actually does good things for people, like shoveling snow and mm -hmm. remember they had all those plows and stuff in New York and Yeah, they have weird little charity keeping things. Keeping pandas and... from from going extinct by showing showing <laughs> Uh, impotent pandas sex videos. <laughs> Maybe they'll bail me out of my YouTube problem and become my new oh, host. Oh, we'll just put this over. We'll just put our show over on Pornhub. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, do, we might have to add some things that we're not comfortable with, but yeah. Yeah, or Maybe take that. off some things that we're not comfortable <laughs> with. Uh, all right, let's do this. Pornhub has shut down. Sorry. Pornhub has shut one man out of enjoying his favorite naked videos and their full potential because he's deaf and mm. violating federal law in the process. So he's filed a class action lawsuit. Yaroslav Suris is suing the popular porn site claiming he is denied, or sorry, uh, it's denied the deaf and hearing impaired access to its videos that others can easily enjoy. According to the docs obtained by TMZ, Suris says a lack of closed captioning violates their rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, in documents filed, Sura says the deaf and the hearing impaired can't understand the audio portion of videos on on websites. Some of the titles Suri suggests he watched uh, he watched but was completely lost on dialogue was quote hot step aunt babysits disobedient nephew or sexy <laughs> cop gets witness to talk and daddy 4K Allison comes to talk about money to her boy's naughty father. Those are actual <laughs> video titles. Okay. <clears throat> I, isn't Pornhub one of the places where they had the um the visual descriptions for the blind? The 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 uh Oh, like audio porn videos, right, where it says, Okay, she's wearing a uh she's wearing a nice white blouse, uh untucked. <laughs> uh okay, she's taking that off. She's got a lacy red bra underneath. Uh yeah. She's leaning on a respectable credenza, probably something that was picked up at IKEA. Mm-hmm. There you go. I mean, the and idea assembled hastily by the the grip and the uh, the lighting guy. The the idea is you're supposed to be able to you know like if if he goes to watch Netflix or he goes to watch sure I don't know TV the closed captioning and all that stuff is always an option. But yeah. in this case, you're talking about a site filled with content created by a bunch of dummies. It's not. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like oh, it's so Fox. Is yeah. <laughs> but it's like you know some guy and his neighbor swinging or whatever. It's not. It's not. This isn't a professional right. it's effort. Not it's not professionally all... produced, or some. Of, I don't know if some of it probably is, but the. Do these things need? I mean, I guess if you if you need the if the setup is part of the fantasy, right? If it's finding out that that's a stepmom, um, is what works for you, and there's no. Guide, no dialogue, closed captioning to tell you. That woman is the stepmom, or, or I mean, maybe if okay, they okay, stepson, you've been very bad. I don't know why you're 35 and still living at home. Maybe it's maybe it's well, if there's if they're not charging for this, I don't know why they'd be why they would be held to do any of that. Do you know what I mean? Like this isn't yeah. They're not a paid service. They're not a public service. They're just a free website to get your porny porn. Well, YouTube um, is a free service, but I think they. I guess they don't have close. Do they have automatic closed captioning or? or I don't think so. Like, no I AI mean, if, closed captioning. If you went, if you went and posted a, a video of you chasing your cat around the house and telling it, uh, you know, reading a, a Homer to it while you're chasing mm -hmm. 
that's not going to the system's not going to suddenly give you full cl closed captioning on the Brian Iliad, Chase and his cat. Chapter 1. <laughs> I mean maybe they maybe there's a way for YouTube to to, to do machine based, you know, translation yeah. or whatever, but that's going to be that spotty. In, in bars. When the TVs are turned, uh, the, the audio is turned off on TVs and bars while we're sitting there having a drink and we look over and it's like completely mistyping everything that's being said by the, the sportscasters or whatever. Yeah. So, um, so, it's, so it's unreliable at best when it comes to live content. When you're doing closed captioning for, old, you know, for archival stuff or on-demand stuff, yeah. that's one thing. But in this case, literally Pornhub has it, Brian, so that you and I, as I understand it, could go i don't know i've never been to this site so we could go, whatever <laughs> you and i could go make a, a a amateur video in an alley somewhere with a drunk guy and a i don't know whatever whatever our setup is and then we go post <laughs> the thing yeah. I, I don't see how they can manage that how are they going to manage right. that right so i think he's well i don't think it's yeah i don't think you know maybe Pornhub could could just do the uh the machine based uh, the ai based uh, closed captioning, but I think it is up to the person who uploads the video, and if they want their video to be to have a wider audience, uh, maybe they, you know, they take it upon themselves to say, "Oh, you know, I want more people to enjoy this video. I'm going to add the dialogue as closed captioning, so that people understand that that she's the stepmom, he's the misbehaving 35 year old that's still living at home, right? And she's only two years older than him." And, and <laughs> What's man, going on here? Man, you've really theater of the mind here. Brian's really filled out the, the plot points. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, basically what this is is a is a possible brand new fresh She's just hot the woman that my dad married. She's not my stepmom. <laughs> it's a fresh it's a fresh new uh uh loophole in a lot sounds like to me. Mm -hmm. And I like these kinds of things forgetting about the sort of lascivious nature of the porn aspect of it. But I like this kind of thing because it makes everybody sort of look at the law and go, all right, well, no one foresaw the internet when closed captioning was part of the Americans with Disabilities Act thing. And also it's just, you know, a big free open Wild West thing. So what do we do when we apply it here? So I actually like when stuff like this comes up. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm fascinated by this kind of this kind of thing. I, I, mm -hmm. I, so we'll see mm -hmm. how it goes for Yaroslav Suris and whether or not he can enjoy his. Yes, I hope I hope he's able to uh, finally be able to figure out what's going on. Oh, that guy's delivering a pizza. Okay, now it makes sense. JC, JC Calhoun is right. Pornhub is great at free publicity. This is free publicity. He's, he's right. That's true. Yeah, they're very good at that. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, outrage after a Chinese theme park forced a pig to bungee jump. Dang, that World of Warcraft uh, theme park is just not doing well. No. <laughs> they do have that one in China, though. It's a knockoff. They do, but... yeah. I know. <laughs> I kind of want to go there sometime. But... Oh, if I was ever in China, in that part of China, I yeah, would absolutely yeah. make oh, it a yeah. point to go. Yeah. I don't know if I'd ride anything because none of it looks safe, but um, mm -hmm. I'm curious about it. Anyway, so this Chinese theme park has triggered a wave of outrage on social media. It's always where it happens. Uh, after it forced a pig to bungee jump off a 68-meter high tower. Video footage shows the pig tied to a pole carried by two men to the top of the tower before being pushed off. Squee! He said on his yeah. way down. The he went wee, wee, wee all the way down. <laughs> the theme yeah, park. I'm, I'm absolutely, I agree with the uh, the uh, the wave of outrage on social media. That's horrendous. Yeah, I wouldn't do this to a pig. It seems not nice. Yeah. No, no. The, the pig did not choose to bungee jump. Yeah. And it was probably scared poopless all the way down for yeah. no reason, just for somebody else's entertainment. Scared all the bacon out of him. You know what the thing is? Uh, uh, if you go watch an episode of like Mythbusters, they did worse things to pigs, but they were all dead. So well, if you're gonna yeah, exactly. if you're gonna get a pig from a slaughterhouse and then throw it off the bungee, fine. But no, this they, is and not they, cool. If you look at their driver's licenses, they all signed the back and said, "We're okay with this." <laughs> They have a little slot for that over there, the pigs do. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, it's like a little hoof print <laughs> Oh, on hey, the back. That reminds me. Did you get a thing in the yeah. mail? Did you get a new license in the mail recently? From no, the, but from I've got one that has a star. Are you, are you talking about the little star? Yeah. What is that about? I didn't read about it. I don't know what that's about. Why do we have to do that? Do well, know? it's um, it's just another measure of uh, making sure that you don't sneak by TSA with, uh, f with fraudulent information, Scott. Yeah, you need a... Uh, it, it won't be a requirement until October, but after October, you will not be able to fly unless your driver's license has a star on it. So, 
why wouldn't if people are faking it now wouldn't they just fake the star fake a star i guess i mean i i smell colossal tax money spent on a dumb <laughs> thing that's what i smell here that seems really stupid to me it is uh it, it is odd because it's you know it's it seems like it'd be really easy to draw a star on your license. Well, it wouldn't Especially be hard. Mine is gold and has a little bit of a hologram to it, but I've seen seen that they're just little black stars. And uh, uh, we've all seen what people can do with a Sharpie. Right, but they not only make, that. They can make hurricanes go in places that hurricanes <laughs> shouldn't go. But uh, Well, I mean, the, the, the my main point is like, <laughs> let me think about this for a second so I don't say something stupid. Yeah, I don't see how this works. So when you make a really good fake ID, which can be done, yeah, uh, it's a it's a it's an art to do it. And when you do it, it's sure. it's convincing. This isn't a new technology. There's no like hidden little thing in there that's like a chip. It's not like that. It's just mm -hmm. a star. It's like putting a sticker on there. So someone's will fake that immediately. Like we just wasted it. That is a lot of tax money to send everyone new uh, new licenses in the mail across the country. It that's is. kind of it ridiculous. Totally all right. Well, sorry, sorry. That Apparently, seems... Oklahoma, according to Gutter, is a tool. Oklahoma and Utah have been resisting it for over a decade. Oh, and we're just now doing it. Yep. Oh, who made it federal? Did somebody make it federal? I don't know. It's the whole real ID is the is the is the. Uh, but how the is it a real ID? It. It's still just my driver's license, but with a star on it now. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's not actually any different. It. You're in a new database. You're in a new FileMaker Pro database now, Scott, that says that, oh, he's got a, now he has a license with a star on it. So we know. Yeah, but well, but to what end? I don't know. I you know, I always know. ask that question, to what end? If you can't answer yeah, to what end, what then end? you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many people don't ask that question. It's time to start asking to what end, everybody. So Jonathan says in the chat room, and it is pronounced Jonathan because he's got a Y in there. He says it's RFID. Is it really? It has an RFID? So this is... Um, oh, does it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they say it is has stuff programmed into it they can scan at federal buildings and TSA. Okay, that I didn't know. I thought it was uh, just a, an image. So, that okay. Okay, well, then sense. that okay. makes sense to me. That creates a more... Yeah. I mean, it's even RFID can be gained. That system can be gained. Sure. But sure. it's one step closer to not being gained. I'm not going to get conspiratorial like some people, though. That's just another step toward everybody having a, uh, a freaking, what the, What do you call it? A, this uh, is the way that the shape-shifting lizard people yeah. can uh, track you down yep. with their uh, their, their uh, chemtrails. Yep, their chemtrails, and they're going to they're gonna put a barcode on your neck, just like Agent 47. You're going to be like the hitman walking around with a, with a barcode, getting scanned. That's our future, pigs. people. Sheeple. Yeah. I hate that. I hate that kind of thinking. When they do it, fine, but they haven't done it, and it's not that big a deal. Just relax. <laughs> That's right. All right. Um, yes. I guess I'm a little, <laughs> I'm feeling a little, not antagonistic, but a little annoyed about people's now the, fear. Now of the lack stuff. of sleep is, is rearing its ugly yeah, it's, head. It's Scott. coming in now, yeah. This right. is what happens. And this was this the little room. star on my license tells me that I have a stepdad. Well, he's not my stepdad. He's just the guy who married my mom. They have rotting chicken over there from their little party last night, just sitting there rotting. Gosh dang it. This is a chicken and hip hop party, huh? Man. <laughs> yeah, Ranger. basically, yeah. What, it chicken nuggets or is it? Uh... It was, uh, let's see, it looks like, um, I can't see the box. Oh, it's Popeye, and so probably like. And, probably he's, and he's currently sleeping, right? He's just currently. Oh, yeah, he's out. Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? Uh -huh. He doesn't work today, so he's out today. Yeah. Um, well, you could, you could go and gently. You pick up all the chicken and take it upstairs to his room and yeah. go in and quietly lift the covers and dump all the chicken in the bed next to him. <laughs> That's what my dad did to my brother. I've told you about that, where my brother didn't pick up the dog poo like he told him he would. <laughs> oh, yes. So my dad filled the bed with dog oh. poo. <laughs> man, damn, that is uh, such a brutal thing, man. That is brutal. And it was all little hard, little old dog poos. It wasn't wet, fresh ones or anything. But still, it doesn't matter. It, it warms up quick. And he was it breaks so into little he was pieces. he oh. was so mad, but he never, ever didn't do it again. <laughs> it taught him the lesson, right. which is what oh. we're looking for ultimately. All right, uh, I think I'll do it for today. We'll save these others for tomorrow. Okay, I got some good stuff in there. 
Um, good stuff. I can't wait to get to that store. That one. Oh, that, that oh, one right look there. At that. Oh, oh, look at that, that one. one. Jeez. I know. You it's don't crazy. know what you missed. Oh, it's crazy. But instead, let's have a song, and you've prepared one ever so gently and, and carefully, and like you always do. What do you have? I have uh, Canadian dream pop artist Lev Snow uh, released his brand new EP called Someday Soon. Five tracks. Um, this is uh, this is like uh, who does it remind me of? Stone Roses a little bit. Um, Mazzy Star. Who's there's a God, there's a very specific kind of sound to it. Uh, Charlatans UK a little bit. Oh, all right, I know them. Um, influences there. Very, but you know, Dream Pop is a great example of this. If you like Dream Pop, then you'll like this. Lev Snow, S N O W E is his name, and like I said, the brand new EP is called Someday Soon. Here is the song. Uh, because my computer is still updating my iCloud music library and it's been almost 24 hours. Oh. Dim Light, Dim Light by Lev Snow. All right, here you go. Enjoy. From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents... I still like chicken, but... But hey, man, I put on a girdle. What I got to do? The best tasting pound of Frankfurter's money can buy. This is the morning stream. All right, we're back, everybody. Welcome back to the program. It is now time for us to welcome our good buddy, Bill Doran. Yay! Uh, I think is how you pronounce it. William Doran. Doran. Duran. Duran. William Duran. To do, to Ron, do Ron, 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 to do Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we'd go there. All right, here, let's welcome in proper style here. Here you go. Your bat cave's open there, Bill. Hey, Bill, it's Bill Duran. Hey. What's going on there, buddy? How are you? Good morning. Doing well, oh, and I even built something. <gasps> last week. Holy Yay! crap! You mean you're not just going to tell me about how to post my video? Hey, you're a big <laughs> YouTube guy now. You should have some pull. You know anybody at YouTube that could bail me out of YouTube jail? You don't know any like any little insider? There was, <laughs> there was a time. Uh huh. There was a time when I had an email address for someone who worked there who I could email and they would help me. Yeah. Last time I emailed that person, I got no reply. Yeah. So yeah. bummer. They've I been... have nothing. I have no contact at you. Isn't that bonkers? We have it over six hundred subscribers. Yeah. No contact at you. It is bonkers. Account. I think that person has been killed and converted into robot parts, <laughs> and uh, that's how it works over there now. It's all robots. Well, yep. uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, happy to have you here, uh, regardless of your poll over at YouTube, and um, talking about cool stuff you've been making, because that's what we do with this segment. It's uh, making things with Bill. Bill, tell us what you made this week. I uh, I did, or finished anyway, Hellboy's Good Samaritan <laughs> giant revolver that he has. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Wow. Is so, this what I saw on Twitter today where you had the uh, the IKEA instruction yes. manual? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> which, by the way, Brian, I got your uh, holiday card. Uh, also IKEA themed. Also fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Glad, you, glad you enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, there it is. Look at um, that. Beautiful. So uh, anyway, this this is a prop that's been on my on my bucket list for a long, long time. Um, I don't know what it is about big chunky revolvers, but I'm into them. And that gun is like the the I don't know the quintessential giant chunky revolver. I I, I have it in my hand. I brought it home to play with because that's the kind of kid I am. Uh, my finger barely even reaches the trigger. It's like it would be <laughs> almost impossible for me to fire it. Where oh it yeah. I see the the photo of you holding it, and that's it's, the, <laughs> it's like a club, but it's shaped like a gun. Yes. Uh, oh, anyway, I've wanted beautiful. to make this thing for such a long time. Uh, and last year, my friend Harrison over at Vulpin Props, he made a kit. So he three D modeled and three D printed and sanded and molded and cast all of these parts, so that he could sell a handful of kits. And I bought one. Mm -hmm. uh, I like how he amazing. spells it, by the way, on the box. Mm -hmm. it's, he's done it like an Ikea thing. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Yes. 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 He, it's, he's yeah. my new hero. I don't know. I, you know <laughs> the, uh, yeah. So this is, this is. I mean, Harrison and his team do amazing work, but it is it is a studio of about half a dozen people. It's not a giant you know, production company or anything. They still made a vacuum-formed blister pack container to hold all of the screws. Like, it's it, I, uh, it ends up on screen at some point, but it, it looks... 
like a real product that I bought at Ikea for real. And it, it just makes me so happy every time I look at it. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. That's great. Uh, um, so a really gorgeous kit. It was all, it's a urethane resin kit. You know, it's all plastic. Uh, although I opted to carve my own uh, handle out of hardwood. I used Paduke, which uh, is a very hard wood, I learned, and very difficult to carve. <laughs> Uh, but I, uh, I totally did that. Replaced the plastic handle with a wooden one. Uh, the bullets I put the so in Hellboy when he uses it, he's got these fluorescent green tracking bullets, and he shoots a dude, and it dribbles everywhere, and he can track the guy. So I made the bullets uh, light up put, by putting LEDs in them. Oh no way! Now, oh yeah. So now there is a bit of room because they are twenty-two millimeter wide bullets. They're gigantic. Yeah. Uh, I 3D printed a little little casing that holds the LED and the batteries that slide into it slides into the the bullet casing there. Uh, and then the the most fun part is to turn it on and off. I have a pair or two pairs of of magnets in there, so one pair is not connecting the circuit. The other one is, and when you turn the bullet in the casing, it snaps to the other set of magnets and it completes the circuit and it turns. That's, it that's really cool. That's so cool. <laughs> Was that your idea? Um, I've seen similar things before, but yes. That's amazing. Yeah. What a great idea. Okay. So it's it's great because I mean you do you don't have a ton of room in those those little bullets, but it was a way to fit all of that in there and and both hold the bullet on the casing and have a switching mechanism at the same time. So that was a really really fun solution. Wow, that's really cool. And the and these, uh, I'm sorry, did you say did the kit come with the tips? Did you say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so those are all resin casts, except that those are cast in a clear urethane for okay. the, the glowy bullet ends there. Right, right. Um, and then the bullet casings are cast in a different urethane, but they also um, used a uh, um, like a brass powder in there, so mm -hmm. there's a nice brass coating on there, and you can uh, buff it, and it looks all shiny and awesome. Wow, look at this. So yeah, so it, the the kit just it was extremely thoughtful the way they figured everything out, the way they cast everything. Uh, and a way the way that all of the hardware is used to put the whole thing together, so you can still flip it open, take the bullets out, spin the cylinder around. It's it's deeply satisfying. Yeah, <laughs> I bet it Jeez. is. Um, so, uh, time to finish for a kit like this. I assume anybody can get this kit because it's for sale, right? Um, occasionally they they did a run of them and they're currently out of stock. Ah. Uh, but there are options, and obviously other um. There are other kits other people sell of different props you could get your hands on to, to do a similar project with. Um, we spent, it's so hard to tell because we film everything and it takes forever, but um, maybe like four or five build days on this. Okay. Uh, a lot of it was like painting and waiting for paint to dry before you could put the next layer on. Yeah. That's yeah, the, so it, isn't that like the, three that's days the, that's the bane of a maker's lifestyle, isn't it? Waiting for things to dry. Yeah, kind of. waiting for glue to dry, waiting for paint to dry. Sure. Um, even this thing, like I painted it, uh, and you're when it, when it's it's dry enough to handle and finish and everything. Uh, but even like four days after I uh, finished it, I pushed really hard on a part and it still left a fingerprint. So it like it takes days or weeks to fully fully dry. All right. Ugh. Yeah. You're so right. The the my my nemesis. Excuse me, my nemesis. Paint drying. <laughs> do you hang this up when you're done? Do you put it under glass? Do you? What do you do? To, to... I built a, a stand for it mm -hmm. so that it can be proudly on display, uh, and it'll go in the office somewhere amongst all the rest of our uh, our collection. Ooh, you dropped the barrel, but it landed on your pad. That's right. <laughs> Lucky. Lot of good bloopers in this one. Stick around to the end, folks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's very cool, man. Uh, did you um? See the new the movie they tried to reboot the whole thing. Did you see that? I haven't time? seen the new Hellboy yet. No. Um, I'm curious about know. if I... they change a lot of stuff like for the guns any different. It seemed like in some ways they were aiming more for the comic aesthetic, and they were so yeah. maybe some of that stuff would change. I don't know. I don't know. I like I saw the trailer and I was just like meh. I don't know. It didn't really grab me, that's so I kinda, just never ended up seeing it. That's kind of what happened in general. I think mm -hmm. people were pretty mad on it, but. Uh, but yeah, I was uh, when I first saw it. I thought, oh, a new excuse for people like Bill to make a new version of the revolver and then nobody yeah. talked about that movie so I didn't worry yeah about well the, this version of it so i guess the good samaritan doesn't exist in the comics uh as it is right. in the movie in the ron perlman version anyway um so that was kind of invented for that movie so it's the only place it really exists uh 
and I just really, really dig the look and the style that went into it. So right. Oh, well, look at you! Well, I wanted to make that one. Little solder blooper at the end here. I see. Yeah. So the story is there was a car alarm going off for about six straight hours uh, that day, <laughs> which makes filming super fun, you guys. That's oh, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, it looks really good, dude. I, I'm Thank I'm you. stoked that you were finally able to. I like it when I, we hear that you're you're finally making a replica that you were you know that you've been putting off or that you've always wanted to right. make or whatever. That seems yeah, like yeah, we're bucket list. It's kind of going to be a theme for this year. I hope there's a handful of projects I've been meaning to do for years, and I'm going to try and tackle some of those this year. Ooh, any hints as to an upcoming one? Do you want to drop any kind of? Uh, uh, yeah, another similar one is just the revolver from Trigun from the anime. From oh, the late right. '90s. Sure. Like uh, not not terribly exciting because I just kind of did a, that same thing, but I still want one. <laughs> right. All the guns. You want all the guns. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's cool. Nothing wrong with any of that. All right. Well, uh, this is great. Uh, the video is up in full up at PunishProps.com and, of course, their YouTube channel at Punish Props. Uh, any uh, bonus content from you this week? Yeah, I got a really fun video. This is from the channel Smarter Every Day. They wanted to hit the world's furthest home run whoa <laughs> so they built a home or a, i guess a home run or a baseball hitting machine okay so smarter everyday baseball machine uh <laughs> it's a giant motor with two bats on it and it swings it at like 250 miles an hour it's just oh my God. frightening what? look at yeah. this that's it's scary that's exactly. scary as hell dude uh -huh. yeah no kidding i would I don't even feel like I'd want to be just behind that wooden plexiglass uh, wall. Yeah. I feel like no, they uh, they ended up uh, uh, deciding to improve that later in the video. <laughs> Listen to that thing. That thing sounds like it's going to take off and fly. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. All right, I got to watch that whole thing later. That looks. That looks yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, nice work as always, bringing us the cool mm -hmm. stuff every week. Bill Duran is of course to punishprops.com and uh, on Twitter at Chinbeard. Bill, have a fantastic week. You got it. Later, guys. Okay. All right. Oh, jeez. 717 I'm... feet, they estimate this thing fired. Really? Wagged a, wagged a ball. Yes, exactly. I mean, it almost looks like it would obliterate the ball, just blow it, it apart. It does. Right. And the bat in the process. That's nuts, dude. Very cool. All right. So cool. I, want, I wish I could do more stuff like that. but Yeah. You'd have to have, I don't know what you'd have to have. More time, more days. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Things I have none of. Uh, all right. Let's get it going to the next phase. Let's take it to the next level with this. These are their stories. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm terrible with names. Oh, I'm not. It's Justin Robert Young. I'm great with that name. He is here to join us once again from the deep recesses of uh, California. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying that. Uh, it's great <laughs> deep, to have Deep recesses. Yeah, it's good to have you I mean, here, I man. Guess... How are you? I, I guess uh, I guess it is kind of a deep recess like, from from the coming from the east. Like sure. we're we're pretty much up against the the coast. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and you're about there to. Are, uh, uh, there's valley San Fernando. I know is one valley, and isn't that yeah, all that's the down other, south. many many yeah. valleys that you can there's get? A, I'm sure there's a bunch of valleys. <laughs> I don't know. San Fernando's the one where all the porn gets made. Yeah. Do, is that do I have that right? That's also where my grandparents used to live. But oh. yes, probably. Uh, yeah, it sounds legit. <laughs> There's one valley that I, everybody always brings it up, and it's because they got some kind of great tax thing or some kind of right. I don't know what it is, but that's where all the porno gets made. Lots of large, cheap industrial buildings where you can assemble your IKEA furniture. Yeah. And let people roll around on it naked. This sounds right to me. Uh, hey, but the, here's the deal. Uh, Justin comes on the show on a weekly basis, Tuesdays to be specific. We talk about political stuff. We talk about other things. Today it'll be a, a little political because we got some big stuff coming up. First of all, you're going to the primary. Which one are you going to? I forget. You're going to a primary. All of them. Oh, my gosh. What? I didn't hear all, that. Well, well, all of them in, in February when they really count. Um you know, uh, uh, and that's in large part thanks to the listenership of PX3. And I'm sure there's a tremendous crossover here with the Frog Pants audience. But uh, I set what I thought was a ridiculous goal of uh, $17.76 uh, dollars per episode on uh, <laughs> Patreon. $17.76. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, that's great. I love that. But, How uh, on earth did you come up with that number? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, God damn it, if last night we didn't hit it. Yeah. So, uh, 
it it was uh amazing there's a little bit of inflation i've noticed there's a few people that have a fairly unrealistic uh weekly thing but and i don't know whether or not they're rolling in money so we'll see whether or not that comes down but sure hey the number is the number and that's what i uh, uh threw my hat over the wall for so i'm going to iowa next weekend mm -hmm. i'm going to new hampshire the weekend after that uh nevada the weekend after that and then uh the one that i have to book now is south carolina uh oh. and and that will probably traditionally those for tell the tale yeah. uh, uh past that you know you always have an outside shot for something wacky to happen or you're down to two but you have a clear leader um you know past that you have super tuesday and then and then that really kind of puts a bow on it although you know things can stretch out like they did in 2016 and um they certainly stretched out a little bit longer in on on both sides uh charmander costume this time or that not in the offing you know i don't know because that was more of a convention thing yeah that's so true. i don't know whether i, I want to keep it as a convention thing or if i should be going to various different places and uh and doing the charmander thing here's the problem is that with the charmander thing i had a camera crew or rather a cameraman yeah uh that was shooting me so me walking around in the charmander costume looks like me walking around in the charmander costume this i'm kind of doing by myself <laughs> and i'm producing a uh, an audio podcast yeah so i i don't know if the costume is necessarily going to be beneficial but but uh, that is tbd maybe maybe at the convention yeah do like a justin tv mount on your head or something like a <laughs> yeah but then i'd be looking out right yeah. unless i had it pointing back at me yeah you need like a third person like a rod that sticks out behind you which again sounds bad in a crowded space so none of these ideas are yeah. good uh but uh you did have that thing was it mike lee that was uh, did something weird when he saw you as <laughs> what was the deal there was something no with mike lee was the one that kind of got the bit going so Pokemon Go obviously was very popular in that summer of 2016. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Mike Lee, one of our people at the dearly defunct uh, uh, BitTorrent News, uh, asked Mike Lee about Pokemon Go, and he talked about how he thinks it's the dumbest thing on the planet. <laughs> and so i then responded as charmander because <laughs> i was on the set and they were playing the footage and i'm like oh you know i brought a charmander costume <laughs> and they were like what's a charmander and then i said he was a pokemon and then that was they were like I'm like i can come on as charmander and at, once they got over the confusion that i without provocation brought a charmander onesie uh <laughs> to a what was essentially my first paid political <laughs> punditry gig uh, uh they were delighted by it and and so i did a a spot on one of the shows where i was responding to mike lee as charmander and then uh uh the the idea snowballed to me going and interviewing delegates as charmander on the, so on the a lot of people may only know mike lee as kind of a irritating uh, senator, but he's our senator here. He's my, he's one of our two senators from the great state of Utah. And uh, having having you have that particular weird crossover with Mike Lee was uh, was awesome. I love that. I think no, I you know who I did actually see in person who loved the outfit was Greta Van Sustrit. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we were coming back into the press area and Greta Van Sustrit, I guess, had seen me on television because I had walked behind uh uh anthony scaramucci the mooch mm. in a uh in a fox news live shot from the delegate floor and thought that was hilarious and then saw me in person and she was just over the moon i don't know if i've ever seen greta van Susteren as happy as i saw no, her I, live when she saw me as a charm man i don't even know that i've ever seen greta van Susteren happy so that's that's awesome <laughs> yeah so those were uh, those were the things uh that happened at the at the convention this will be a little bit more um you know obviously i'm still going to be my own uh, uh wacky self but uh you know this is the first time that i've kind of been out there on my own dime mm -hmm. and and without a crew and 
uh, I'm just publishing to the people that put me out there. So I'm I'm excited and and I've kind of geared up. Uh, you know, I know we have a lot of new three dollar uh, subscribers now on the Patreon, but they, they get bonus shows on Monday and Thursday. And those I've been uh, every time I've done one of those episodes, I've made it a point to get out of the house just so I can get used to recording and editing outside because right. I know I'm going to be doing a lot. You're going to, that. yeah, that's a lot of that's going to be happening for you. That's true. Well, I'm excited about it uh, just because that's uh, cool on the ground. I feel like we benefit in this kind of weird way <laughs> from you. Oh, no, you're going to get There's nothing weird a about lot it. We totally of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're definitely going to get Iowa and New Hampshire because yeah. I'm there for those days uh, on Tuesday. And then I'm, I think Nevada and South Carolina are on weekends, but you will certainly get all of the all the info. That's awesome. I'm excited about it, and I can't wait to hear. So, this impeachment deal. Yeah. Uh, today's the day it starts. Uh, well, the, Which it definitely is amazing that we spent the first 15 minutes of this segment talking about Mike Lee and a thing that happened four years ago before we got to this uh, life or death yeah. historical impeachment. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is, it's happening. Uh, and... It's literally his trial. Uh, he's not going to be there, though. Like, give it. Can you give us some of that stuff? Like, I don't know how well s suited you are to knowing like the logistics of this thing. But what does it look like? Is it just another? It's just a big room full of some lawyers and lawmakers, and they all take turns <laughs> yes, saying shit. A big room full of lawyers and lawmakers <laughs> called the Senate of the United <laughs> States of America. Well, that's what I mean. But like, it just I mean, how things are juxtaposed? Is it people out in a table in front of them? Are they up on the post? Is like the same same deal, same setup? Well, you know, it starts with a very tasteful song and dance. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, normally there's a juggler and then maybe there's a ballad. Nice. Uh, so the, the, the ground rules of this uh, got circulated yesterday, although they had been rumored for a little bit. And because the Republicans control the Senate and the Senate majority leader is Mitch McConnell, he is the man. Cocaine Mitch makes the rules. And the rules thus far are this. Each side gets 24 hours to be spread out over no more than two days to make their case. The House will make their case on the Democratic side. We have no idea how the president's side, well, how long that will go. Uh, uh, in fact, it may or may not be some version of he didn't do it. We're done. <laughs> uh and then the Senate will take a vote. And this is really the only thing that could bring further drama to the proceedings is a vote on new witnesses. Mm -hmm. If there are new witnesses that uh, want to be brought out. And that seems unlikely, A, because we haven't already seen people. We've seen Mitt Romney and uh, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski kind of do the what I what I like to refer to as the dance of concern, mm. you know, I like to imagine them in in like a wordless interpretive dance where their <laughs> their hands are on their chin and they <laughs> and they think very low, you know, maybe in like a squat and and then they put their finger up to the air and then bring it right back so they can think some more. Uh, <laughs> But it seems unlikely that they're going to vote for for witnesses. What, who the Democrats want is John Bolton. John Bolton, obviously, the former national security advisor to the White House, left on bad terms, takes copious notes, was referred to by other witnesses during the House as being very against anything that Rudy Giuliani was doing in the Ukraine. The money quote was, of course, I want nothing to do with whatever drug deal Rudy has cooking up in, in the Ukraine. Yeah. Well, um, so Democrats want him. The Republicans, and this got floated yesterday, is uh, uh, seem to be of the mind of like, well, hey, look, maybe we can make a deal for Bolton, uh, but you got to give us Hunter. You have to put Hunter Biden in under the hot lights of the Senate to be, uh, you know, effectively cross-examined because uh you know the house has sort of set the tone here yeah uh by the defenders of the president and that would be something that the democrats theoretically would really like to avoid not to mention the fact that even if 
he doesn't totally embarrass himself, there's a high likelihood that there are that this is effectively a, 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 a commercial that the Trump campaign will cut up and reuse if, uh, if, if Joe Biden, Hunter's father, gets the nomination for the Democratic uh, Party. Yeah. That, you know, he's going to say something that can be used in a commercial. He's going to say something that can make a news cycle if not totally meltdown, uh, not unlike Succession Season 2, where you couldn't make a Tomlet without cracking a few Greg shells. I, mean, <laughs> I still haven't seen that show. I keep hearing references, and I need to watch it. But um, yeah. all right, so when when it, even if he makes a weird face, they can make a commercial out of it. So I have no doubt about any of that, but is that the kind of trade? You know, Do you think the Democrats would make that trade? Like, we no. get Bolt we get Bolton uh, this nor, test nor, nor do I think that, the, that anybody is really going to, I think that there is a a latent desire uh, to get this over with. Yeah, I think that the 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 specifically Pelosi's delay, I think, kind of put the screws to some people that had otherwise kind of grinned and bared it. Uh, but even from the perspective of uh, you know, other legislation this is all consuming yeah, right yeah. uh if a bill is likely to not pass normally you just let it die right, right. <laughs> and you move on right this is if you're going to think of it in that context this is a bill highly unlikely to pass so the instinct i think from the lawmakers is let's just move on yeah yeah, this will be interesting. I mean, I guess today will tell the tale if it, what the tone's going to be um, probably throughout. I don't think the, you're going to have any big surprises down the line, but who's, who knows? And how long is this supposed to take, you said? Uh, well, here's the funny thing is that this can go longer, and, and Ted Cruz even threatened it going on as long as two months, uh, which would, you know, if, if, you know, just for anybody doing math, if, if I'm going to be on the road for the next five weeks – that would effectively and and you know these are when presidential contests are decided that would put three of the candidates two of which were bafflingly endorsed uh by the new york times at the same damn time uh that would put them off the road yeah they would not be able to i mean they're already not able to go to iowa uh, at least at the same frequency that they would otherwise uh this would add new hampshire nevada and uh, uh, South Carolina to that list. Wow. Uh, do you think uh, it was my? Other, I was gonna say a thing and I forgot what it was. Uh, shoot, it seemed like a good point, and now I don't remember it. It was gonna be about something to do with a thing, and I oh Ted Cruz. Yeah. Do you think he just has? Do you think right now for this because this proceedings and all of this given how stonewalled the Republicans are all pretty united in this. Do you mm -hmm. think he's just walking around with a constant, maybe too small to notice, but a, a, just a boner all the time? Just, <laughs> just always with a boner, do you think? Does Ted Cruz have a boner? Like right all now? the time right now. Like until this is over, is it just a, a just a raging wiener, wiener boner all he the time? He does seem to get at his feistiest when he is fighting. This is a moment where he is certainly at the forefront of that. And I do think that he enjoys taunting the Democrats by saying, uh, hey, look, you you basically put this in our lap. Uh, so in the parlance of Die Hard, ho, 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 I have a machine gun now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he uh, put out that video of him sitting there going, now the American, you know, like he's got this air of like, you've had your fun. Oh, he loves that. That's his yeah. favorite move. He loves the like, I feel like if there were some, like if we indeed live in our Elon Musk simulation and for whatever reason, a few settings got toggled or they downloaded a patch where all rooms were the hall of presidents, mm -hmm. uh, Ted Cruz would be very happy. Mm -hmm. Like he would, he just loves that like. Like and the Constitution, the Constitution is a great living. Doctor. You do a really good. I've never heard this. 
No, I need to listen to PX3 more often because I'll bet you've done it before. I don't. I don't really do a lot. I didn't know I had the. I didn't know I had the Ted Cruz impression. That's but he does, good because it's a little high, right? Yeah. Like, like uh, uh, it's like you, you friends. I guess I did listen to so much because uh, he factors into one of the Raise the Dead episodes, and so uh, I, <laughs> I, I had to listen to that audio over and over and over and over. Yeah. If you love this country like I know you do. <laughs> It's really good. It's very good. You know, I, I mean, part of me wishes, you know, it's been a lesson for me because Trump yeah. treated him. I his... know <laughs> that Scott Johnson's thinking about my boner right now. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to all you beautiful Americans. May Lady Liberty hold you in her bosom. <laughs> Can you say Constitution again in that voice? Constitution. That's really can you, good. Can you say I am the Zodiac Killer in that voice? <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out, Brian Ibbett. I hate Ted Cruz so much, and you really oh, helped me. Yeah. You, you're helping me deal with it. All right. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I think next week's conversation might be a very well, interesting Well, here's, here's, here's the big thing. The big thing is is that if this goes on the roadmap that Mitch McConnell pitched yesterday, and if, and if the witness vote goes the way that it is likely going to go then this thing is over by next friday yeah that's fast and if this thing is over by next friday that means that there is no impeachment hearing when donald trump does his state of the union and if there is no impeachment hearing going when he is doing his state of the union there might be like a soccer riot at the state of the union because you are going to see gloating the likes of which i don't know if we've ever seen in yeah. the history of American politics, yeah. Donald Trump might, and I know he doesn't drink, so maybe uh, maybe it'd be non-alcoholic. But he he's he's just I imagine the way that Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, would enter the ring. That is what <laughs> Donald Trump is just gonna be up over the like Democratic uh, assembly <laughs> in the House, just cracking two beers together and pouring them both in his mouth and <laughs> mouthing off and flipping the bird. Uh, it's it's basically the one thing that I always learned from the very beginning of the impeachment thing is that you have to begin with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have bipartisan support, then what I believe you're going to see at the State of the Union, if this and does if this indeed does end, is where is is basically the gift you've given to Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I don't know. I want to see. I want to see how this plays out. But part of me doesn't want to watch any of it because it just. Get, it just. Ugh, just. I, I've had it. I don't want to do this anymore. So we'll. We'll see. I. I, I want to. What I really look forward to is next Tuesday when we talk about the aftermath. We can actually like discuss it and we'll know more about what happened. I can actually read it on pages instead of watching it and cringing while I watch it. Um, and I think. Yeah, it's be going good. on right now. Opening arguments oh, are, are they going already on. going. Okay. Yeah, they're going on right now. So, uh, you know, that's that 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 is where it is. To be honest, the bigger story today in politics is uh, the fact that the star maker made yet another appearance. Wait, what? What happened? Wait, what? Who's the star maker? The greatest star maker in the history of American politics. Oh, on. Uh, hold on, a star maker. Um, uh, who would be that in American the man, politics? The, the 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 person who. Uh, uh, creates more presidents than the U.S. Mint. Uh, Hillary Clinton. Whoa. <laughs> Hillary Clinton. Oh. <laughs> wow. She's the star maker. Okay. Explain. Oh, what would yeah. she say? What'd she do? What's her deal? Uh, well, I mean, of course, she's a star maker because, you know, she runs against Barack Obama, a, a junior senator from Illinois, makes him a two term president, runs against a reality show uh, host, and makes him the most surprising president in history. And now. I mean, man, this lady stays busy. I will say this to Hillary Clinton. She works like she just got done with her press tour for her kids book that she put out with her daughter. Um, and by press tour, I mean, Hillary's press tour where Chelsea sat silently next to her and giggled at the appropriate moment. Uh, and uh, and now she's got a new documentary. Yeah, like Hulu or something, right? Or Yeah, uh... that's going to debut at Sundance and is, is already sold to Hulu. And uh, she did some press for that and just torches Bernie Sanders. Wow. Wow. 
uh, uh, just says that nobody likes him, that nobody likes to work with him, that he is at best complicit and most likely uh, fanning the flames of uh, gender bias and hatred. Uh, uh, just, I mean, a a all out assault on Bernie Sanders. Why which- is that happening? Why? Why does she? Do, why would she do that? That seems so stupid. Why? Why so additional division in the party? With you already have tons of it. What are you doing? Uh, I mean, I don't know. To what <laughs> end? No like idea. what? To what gain for her? Like what does she get out of that? Well, I think she personally hates Bernie. Okay. I think that uh, she believes that if it were not for Bernie and. I'd be actually curious to to peel out exactly what the original sin was. Was the original sin running? Was the original sin how he ran? Uh, because what she took offense to was saying that she didn't have the experience, which if I remember that primary correctly, what he was saying was she, not that she didn't do things, but rather she didn't have the right experience to do the things that he was saying he would do. Right. Uh, but by and large, he did not run as nasty a campaign as I thought he could have. Like he he went out. I criticized him at the time for for coming out and saying that like I'm sick and tired of hearing of your damn emails, <laughs> uh, which I thought was stupid because yeah. it's not like she didn't face further questions about her emails. It would be mm. better that she deal with it in <laughs> the Democratic right. primary uh, and have it kind of played out in, in at that point then have it linger on uh but uh, she hates him and she hates the fact that he held on so long she hates the fact that she that she believes that he split the democratic uh base because of it and mm. i think that that hatred lingers mm. just seems like she could have saved it you know let it mm-hmm. let let this year go by let that let uh, november 8th happen and then and then maybe pipe in like why? Why now? Why? What? That's just bad for everybody. I don't know. Whatever. Politics, uh, man. I don't want to spend five minutes with any of these people in any meaningful Here's what way. I think. Yeah. I think that Hillary Clinton is was born to be a shock jock. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I think that. I mean, she she has a lot of rage. You know, <laughs> she has she has the kind of rage that I think would be best channeled between the hours of six and ten in the morning. Mm. Uh, she she has she holds grudges. She knows how the news cycle works. She she uh, uh, is, and also she's compelling. In you know, for me, I have heard a hundred and thirty percent more from Trump supporters who loathe Hillary but can't stop talking about her because they're obsessed with the idea that she's going to run again. Yeah. Than I have heard from Hillary supporters, and it reminds me so much. Of like Howard Stern or Opie and Anthony or Man mm-hmm. Cow, like you always hear about them getting in trouble or that thing they said. Like it's always, even if it's it's in appreciation, it always stems from hate, yeah. right? Yeah. There's some condemnation about it, and I really feel that Hillary would be a very good shock jock. I hope she explores that. Maybe that's her next step. Yeah, and then she can say whatever she wants, get on XM or whatever the hell it is now. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Hill in the morning. morning. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> HRC. Um, there was a great interview with her on Howard Stern that I think you can find on the archives and stuff. If, if you have. You thought it was great. I thought, I it, thought was it was terrible. Great. Really? Oh, I thought she came across as so. Uh, as, as kind of less the robot that she that she was accused oh, of being I, I, during the campaign. I think she is honestly. My issue was less about her, although I probably heard a lot more Hillary Clinton interviews and I've, I've heard her like that mm. before. Okay. Um, her tone was not the issue. It, it's the fact that she's got like four talking points. Like, and, and, and <laughs> I, I do genuinely believe that she believes them. My yeah. issue is more with Howard. Like, man, he is a different interviewer than he used to be in the heyday. Yeah. Like there, uh, there are some <laughs> questions that the old Howard would have <laughs> salivated over over asking. And then right, beyond yeah, the you, like Hillary, do you masturbate? I mean stuff yeah. like that he's gonna well, eliminate. No, no, no. But beyond beyond <laughs> that, beyond like, you know, like, oh you have a you know just a woman 
but I don't know. I, I don't. God damn it! I broke. I had two really good impressions, and then I I went for the third oh, one, and it was bad. That's the one people are gonna remember now. Yeah. And now, hey, look, Justin Robert Young, the guy with the crap Howard Stern impression. Uh, but like, there there's a lot of stuff of of, you know, where you went wrong. Mm. Why why did things fall apart? How much of this is your fault? You know, how much of it isn't? How much like and. I think that that that's the kind of stuff that I think is frustrating, at least for me in listening to Hillary Clinton interviews in general, is that man, is there always somebody else to blame? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, there and not to say that politics is this bastion of, uh, (laughs) you know, self-reflexive thought because it very often isn't. But uh, I think that that is partly what is frustrating is that there were these clear problems with her campaign. There were clear issues with her as a candidate. And you almost feel gaslit at a certain point when everything is about Russia and everything is about misogyny and everything is about uh, Bernie and something else beyond, you know, beyond her. Yeah. And obviously, I think that there's a there's room for us to discuss these things. I don't. I'm not here to deny that they exist. But man, is it kind of weird yeah. that we never get anything about like, yeah, you know, in hindsight, we should have campaigned in Michigan, mm-hmm. or I should have had a better answer right. about my emails. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, you never do. You never do hear that, do you? Or maybe you hear it from well, I don't. know, Maybe somebody's saying it, but. They can all, I don't want to go to lunch with any of them, is my bottom line. <laughs> uh, all no, right. I know no why. I think oh, I, by the way, yeah. I've been reading a lot about Mitt Romney's father. Oh, tell me more about Mitt Romney's father. He was, uh, I could tell you a few things. He was uh, uh, governor of Michigan. Or he no, was? Uh, not Michigan. Um, governor yeah, of. No, Michigan. 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 Yeah. All right. There's that. And then he was, uh, he was in, um, uh, that's all I know. That's it. That's all I know. I know, you know, because I've been reading a lot about 1964 for the second season to Raise the Dead. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, George Romney plays a pivotal part in that story. Um, and it was just the funniest line where he's at the governor's meeting in Cleveland and he just sits down and thinks, apropos of nothing, one day I want to give birth to a young French boy named Pierre. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm joking. They oh, I hope that, so. But, <laughs> but um, let me just say this, that the idea that like Mitt Romney is somebody, and he did this again yesterday where he's like, I'm going to think very hard about this witness vote. I'm going to think very hard about it. Like the idea that the the that Mitt Romney thinks very hard about something and then kind of just does the thing you thought he was going to do at the, at the beginning before he thought really hard about it. Yeah. Let, let, let's just say that's a familial trait. He yeah. got it. He got it. It came through the grapevine. The apple didn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, that apple also bonks Jeff Flake on the head, too, I think. I think all those guys have a little... I haven't sp- read anything about Jeff Flake's dad yet, but well, I'm coming for all the dads, man. I'll yeah. tell you what. Here's something that you realize real quick. Like, Washington's run by, like, six families. Like, it's, it's so funny that you go through these old books, and you're like, oh, I know that name. And mm-hmm. you Google it, and say, oh... It's their father. It's their uncle. It's their grandfather. Oh wow! Dynasties. I guess I guess everybody just kind of like that's just the family business is being in government. Yeah, I think I think you're probably not wrong. And then it's always the scramble on the out on the fringes of that to try to be the next family to have a hand in it. You know. Well, yeah, and that that in in a lot of ways that's the story of uh, Barry Goldwater, and and that's currently the story of. Uh, bernie sanders but yeah that that is that is the tale of season two of raise the dead excellent i'm looking forward to that i'm looking forward to your coverage of the primaries and I'm looking forward to what we see on the other side of this weirdness today uh let's uh make sure you get a chance to tell everybody where you're going to be what's what's I, you got another thing this week right you're going to san francisco or something you're crazy oh yes all right so here's the deal uh frog pants folks in the bay area if you are in the Bay Area, uh, congratulations. I got your plans for tomorrow night. Come on out to the <laughs> Piano Fight Theater, and uh, you will see a live show of Night Attack featuring myself, Brian Brushwood, Bryce Castillo. The boys are in town, and joining us live on stage, 
uh, Anthony Carboni, Veronica Belmont, and Rebecca Watson making her Night Attack debut. Uh, you can It's all a part of SF Sketchfest. Mm-hmm. So you can go to sfsketchfest.com and uh, uh, go ahead and get your tickets. It's at the Piano Fight Theater at 8 p.m. So not a crazy not a crazy time. We're going to have you out in time so you can uh, 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 go ahead and get your normal night's sleep. But it's going to be a real fun night out. I guarantee it. And uh, and then, of course, if you're into politics, 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 politics is the podcast. Free political newsletter is the newsletter. And if you want to get all of the politics that you can handle, head on over to TakePoliticsSeriously.com and uh, uh, pledge to the cause that's going to put me on the road for the next five weeks. Nice. Make him travel. Here's a preview of Veronica's time on stage uh, tomorrow. How about a booby? There you go. It's going to be great stuff. Check it out. <laughs> uh, yes, the yes, Dan Wilder. There is Night Attack tonight. There oh, is Night Attack tonight. Oh, okay. But, uh, good, good, good. Uh, uh, we're also doing it the next night so we wow. can... Uh, two nights of Night Attack. Can you believe it, two Brian? Two nights in a row. Man. Two of them. Man. At the Jeez. same time. Like, that, we're the New York Times endorsement. That's... Oh. <laughs> Remind me next week I have questions about paper endorsements of candidates. We have to talk about that. Yeah. Oh, bye. All right. There goes Justin. He's out. The jury will now retire. He's now retired. Very good. Uh, that's it for the show. We're done. Hey, Brian, would you like to know where people yes, can sir. go uh, and help this show at a very fundamental, basic level? Would you like to know There's that? There's a place where people can help the show uh, yep. at a very fundamental basis, on yeah. a regular basis? Yeah, How all those things. People do that? Well, Scott. let me tell you where they go. They go to patreon.com <laughs> slash TMS. Imagine uh, going over there and plunking down a buck or two and saying, hey, for the month, I'm supporting my favorite podcast, a daily podcast that gives you Four days of 100% wonderful free entertainment. Uh, maybe I should give to that cause. Uh, or maybe I want to hump, hump. I want to hop on so that I also get access to the fifth episode a week in the form of TMSPM because now that's the only way you're getting that show. So uh, head on over there. Take care of it. Get it done. Patreon.com slash TMS. Noticed a lot of new faces in there. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys Yay. very much for your support. Uh, d- oh, yeah. And don't forget our website, frogpants.com slash TMS. All right, we are about what a week away from. When's the play date? What's our date? Uh, oh, the thirty first. So thirty first. Week and a half, away. Week and a half Friday away. the thirty first. There you go. Uh, you all can come to that and be here live yes. and watch us play games, or if you're patrons, play with us. But you can watch either way. And uh, again, you can get in for a buck and you can play with us. We're going to play Jackbox games and uh, have a blast. It's a fun monthly thing we do now, and we really God, enjoy it. So One of my favorite things we do now. Love it. Yep. So be here or be square. All right. Squeery. Uh Brian, what do you got for a, a song to go out on? I have something requested by Calvin. He wrote in last month and said, hey, whenever you can fit this in, well, today I'm fitting it in. He says, no special occasion, no special date, and no Lieutenant Yard. Just a rocking version of Psycho Killer. Uh, this is great. This uh, this is a, a cover I had no idea about. It came out in 2014 uh, by a band called One Bad Son from their album Black Buffalo. It's a cover of the Talking Heads' Psycho Killer. Fa 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 fa. Uh, get check it out right now. Here's One Bad Son and Psycho Killer. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Kissing. Kissing. Right in the park, like you never saw. There to make your blood boil. Okay, gosh. Easy there, Grandma. Yeah, jeez. Um, Leninaid says, an entrepreneur would argue that it's bad to take away uh, a freebie rather than add a premium feature. Eh. Mm-hmm. eh. It would have been bad. It was bad for us not to offer it as a premium feature from the start. Yeah, that was dumb. And then we let you have it for six years for free. And then nobody cared. We had a guy email. Was it the email we got where he said, uh, you guys are right. <laughs> I was freeloading. I, yeah, yeah. I, I never thought I should. Why worry about it? It's not, it didn't cost me anything. It's already unlocked. I don't have to worry about it. He says, now I'm going to hop on and help. I'm not. And we're look, no pressure. It's just the one extra thing. It's an hour a week that you, you right. If you just don't get it, then it's okay. We're here the rest of the week, man. We're here the rest of the week. Exactly. Exactly. And if we had time to add a whole nother premium, well, actually, we do have a way to add a whole nother premium feature. And that is get us to our next goal, which unlocks that game show we wanted to do. Oh, so, my God. Unlock the game show already. Yeah, it's up there just hovering at the same thing as always at. 
We gave away such fun prizes, and it's like it's like Frog Pants All Stars from uh, from Nerdtacular, but on a on a monthly basis. Monthly basis. Monthly basis. Monthly basis. <laughs> top <laughs> top men men. All right, now we do the top titles that were chosen and uh, added by you, voted on by you. <laughs> Why is the winning thing a, an emoji? How is that possible? Uh, I guess BioCal made this thing, so maybe he snuck it in there. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Gaga peen. I'm saying that out loud. That's great. <laughs> uh, um, uh, let's see. Hide the girl power. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, let me freeze. There we go. I was responding to a Dice Tomato who asked, wait, is TMSPM live at all now? And I'm saying, yes, patrons will be able, like, there will have a, it'll be live viewable on Patreon. Yeah, it's an embed, so they'll mm -hmm. still get it. It just won't be public. Yep. Just won't be Twitch, Twitch Uh, Well, it'll still be Twitch. It'll just be a hidden. Supposedly, there's a way oh, to do it, so gotcha. you okay. hide it. Yeah. It's not, we're not using fingerprint or whatever look at bio cow and all his emojis he's got penises going down vaginas going up he must have <laughs> just added a feature that's what i'm thinking i think so it's hilarious the cranky guy who is my stepfather i guess put that in there <laughs> 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 permanent hollywood canadian couples um let's see new future alternate present <laughs> <laughs> gallbladder d processes dim sum i like that put that in for tanner yep yep um, i'm just looking to see if we missed any other ones at the top that that uh <laughs> ted the ted cruz raging wiener boner tough dumb and pornless <laughs> <laughs> that's really good uh, yeah and yet another emoji one from BioCow. it's almost like he's trying to uh trying to like show off the fact that it can do emojis by making sure we see all these he's encouraging others to use it or something yeah um let's see let's see let's see oh man this is so long uh <laughs> gallbladder in the jar oh nice one loop <laughs> um <laughs> big marbly dark balls i'm putting that in Let's see. <laughs> Rode my Chevy with Eugene Levy, but Shit's Creek was dry. <laughs> That's good. I love it. All right, you know That's what? Good. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. Put it in. It's really good. Every Johnson poops. <laughs> <laughs> How does that have zero votes? I yeah, love that one. That should have votes. <laughs> I want to give birth to a young French boy named Pierre. We're putting that in too. Yeah. Luke, you got my number today, man. All right, frozen and checked only. Oh, yes, plenty. Plenty. What do you like? Hide the girl uh, power. Oh, I guess we could take, uh, if we've got Gaga peen, we don't need peen in the meat dress. Oh, yeah. So we could turn, I'll turn that one off. Okay. All right. How do you like um, hide the girl power for a title? I kind of like that. Hide the girl power. Sure, hide the girl power. All right. Brian says it goes in their boots. It does. That's why their boots are so large. Yeah. It's why. Yeah. All right. Let me download this. Let me run this. Hold on to your butts, America. We've almost got it. Uh, there we go. All right. Oh, I got to put in Bill and Jury, and then that'll be done. Bill and the Jury. Bill. Duty. Okay. Okay. Here goes, Brian. It's time. And we do it in okay. three, two, one. Coming up on TMS, Gaga Peen. Rode my Chevy with Eugene Levy, but Shit's Creek was dry. Where's my mom, Levy? Permanent Hollywood Canadian couples. The cranky guy who is my stepfather, I guess. Gallbladder processes dim sum. Near future or alternate present. Every Johnson poops. Deaf, dumb, and pointless. Pornless. He went, he, he went, wee, 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 all the way down. <laughs> I read that as all the F down. I don't know, because there's yeah. that F in there. I know, yeah. Oops. All right. I want to give birth to a young French boy named Pierre. <laughs> Pierre. 
big marbly dark balls. You want me to take the rest of these? I'm you good. okay? Making things with Bill. Jury duty and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. I'm choking on myself over here, man. Okay. Well, that's good. What we did there is good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think I, I think I like it. Luke Sidewalker in the chat room says, My dog keeps jumping up on my bed and leaking his man batter everywhere. Man Wouldn't batter? that be dog batter? Is- Why does your dog have man batter? What is batter? Oh, Scott. I don't want to know. What is it? Yeah, it's it's a euphemism for Is it sperm? It is sperm, is is the uh is what it's a euphemism for. Well, yes. How's the man okay, well then how's your dog's man batter? Why, why is it uh, he's available? He's excited. He's excited about being up on the bed, I guess, Scott. I don't like this. This is no. bad. This is no, dark. it's there's nothing to like about it. This is nothing nothing good about this any nothing of this. Nothing to like about it. All right. Well, I'll tell you what is good. My wife brought me a big look at this salad here. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I've got a salad and a turkey lasagna to eat for lunch today. Well, look at us being healthy. What's that mm-hmm. about? What's that uh, about? I don't know. It's an impressive. You can't explain that with soil. So. No, nope, you can't. Uh, why is. Oh, that is you. All right. Well, I'm closing it now. For some reason, you looked frozen, but you weren't. I wasn't. No, I just sitting very, very still. That's how you do it. Carefully. Very still. Are you? Are you? Uh, do you have any other? Uh, oh, I'll let you know, uh, know on Monday. I should know today. I just got to talk to Kim because there was something Monday, but I might be able to not do it and just do. Oh, this right. Okay, about the uh, NTP reunion show. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I need to remind everybody in the who's all coming to in, that. Um, so far, ten of the contestants from season two have said they're in. That's so. great. Yeah. I, it, we can guess on who one of the people hasn't responded is because they basically once the, once they were out of the show they stopped responding completely. Really, they were out. That was it. They were out. Mm. They don't like working with other people. That was a weird deal. Yeah. That whole what thing. kind of a deal? <laughs> uh, we're running out of words that we can say that don't remind us of. I know. Else. Yeah. That don't trigger. Yeah. It's totally true. That's bad. All right, Brian. A bit, everybody. See you later. All right, mother truckers. Um, what's going on today? So, oh man. So I want I'm supposed to Frog Pants plays, but I got a meeting, so I don't know how long this meeting is going to go. In fact, let me check see if he responded. If he hasn't answered me, maybe I can just start. Uh, hold on. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, do you want to hang around while I edit and stuff? And then I'll um, I'll let you know. You don't have to hang around. I mean, you can do whatever you want. But um, If you want to hang around, that'd be cool. Um, oh, Jeannie, that PM thing will be... Uh, it's up in the upper right-hand corner of the Patreon page. It says RSS feed. There's only one feed. So it will include both bonus content and the PM. They will both be in there because uh, they only because Patreon only supports doing one one single audio RSS feed. Um, I'll make that. I'll I'll get all that stuff ready. I mean, we haven't had one off the feed yet, so it's not like anyone's missing anything yet. But I'll I'll make sure that there's like a page that says where people go, and I can give that link to people as they need it, and I'll let you you know so you can spread it around on our stuff. Um. Yeah, and the twivit, the pri- twivit, the t- private Twitch streaming thing. I've only been told works, so I haven't actually tried it yet. So Dice Tomato, I'm I'm working on that. I hope to have that resolved soon. If not, I'll have another. I'll, I'll figure something out, but um, I'm sure I can work it out. All right. Uh, uh, if you guys want, uh, hold on. Let me check something real quick here. Today is the 21st, right? So. Oh, shoot, I do have to get on this call. Dang it. Okay, well, I'll have to be back then, but I am going to I am gonna do some streaming today. It might end up being some art instead of games because I've got a billion things i got to get drawn. I'm behind. So uh, just watch for notifications. Check your Twitters, that sort of stuff. If you want to, if you don't want to, it's okay. got busy days. I know. I know what's up. I get it. But if you want to hang around and chat and stuff, I'll be around in a little bit. Okay? All right. You guys are great. I'll see you soon. Bye now.